To the officers and crew of the GTD Aquitaine, we have halted the Sheevan advance. The Battle of Capella is over. We sealed off the system, and our people are safe. Maybe forever. No one can fathom how or why the Sheevans destroyed the Capella Star. Though we know our enemy better now than we did 32 years ago, their motives remain a mystery. Perhaps they are exiles like we are. Nomads wandering the universe, searching for a way back home. The explosion of a star might be the bridge between this universe and their own. As the old poet once said, there are more things in heaven and earth than are dreamt of in your philosophy. From our odyssey into hell, we return with a gift. The ancient technology to build a portal between Delta Serpentis and Sol. To restore the link to our blue planet. To return home after all these years. This is Admiral Petrock, signing off. So, yeah, an open end there. Nobody knows quite what the Sheevan got up to, what went down, why they did what they did just then. Indeed, whether they might be sympathetic and whether we might be in the wrong. Something that bears thinking about. Of course, the only true answers will come with Free Space Free, which will never arrive. It's rather a disappointment, at the same time as being a good thing, actually. It's my rationale for that is, I think, whatever Free Space Free would be, it would not live up to our expectations. And speaking quite frankly, I think Felician have really set themselves up for a fall with the Sheevans, because there's so many little details you can pick apart, big plot holes and stuff, in Free Space 1 and Free Space 2, if you put the two together. Free Space 1 makes sense in it on its own, and Free Space 2 generally makes sense in its own, but... I'm not going to bore you with the details, I've never been too interested in petty things like plot holes. Yeah, petty things, but... Yeah, I just think that Free Space 3, if it did come out, it, the answers it offered wouldn't be fully satisfactory. From both a logical standpoint and from what the Sheetans have been built up as. Because past the appeal of these great, you know, threats, these generic enemies, these, uh, you know, the Sheevan's a personification of a hostile universe. And to reveal everything behind them just like that would demystify them, if you know what I mean. It would... it would... it would cheapen them. Uh, it's odd to say, but... I like my Sheevan's unexplained, uh, if you know what I mean. I like them to be a framing device for the rest of the story. The story of the Terrans and Fasudans and everything in between. And they should remain a mystery, unsolved, something that can come into the plot when it's convenient. But the plot should generally use them as a backdrop rather than something you should actively try and explain. Uh, I'm trying to think of an, an analogue. Uh, it would be something like Cthulhu. You could go on forever and ever trying to explain the Elder Gods and that mythos and finding solid motivations and origins and stuff, but in the end that's not the point. The point is they're there, and they do things, and it affects the characters. And this character, characters in this case being Terrans and Pseudons. And that, that's what's the main story, and that's what should be the main story. Anyway, I've rambled on for long enough, but I said at the beginning that this game kind of killed off the space sim genre. And the reason being, it's just so good. It does everything right, pretty much. And it's very hard to know how you can improve upon it. I mean, there's all kinds of little things, but generally it's a very solid formula. And it doesn't really need tweaking. It's like these people who complain about modern RPGs not living up to the standards of yesteryear. To which I say, you've still got the RPGs of yesteryear. You can play them. You can play them to death, you can play Baldur's Gate as much as you want. And you can download all sorts of mods and stuff for it. And it will be just the same kind of gameplay you like, and style, and feeling, and you've got it all there. On a similar note with Free Space uh, and mods, uh, there's something uh, kind of a hang-up for me, is that 
I never like going outside the vanilla campaign. Because I'm not sure what it is, but mods, no matter how good, are just never quite the same as knowing that this is the canon story of the game. And this is what the developers want to, you to play through. It's, it, it's a strange hang-up, I know. Uh, we all have our irrationalities. And that, that's one of mine. Uh, saying that, I have played Silent Threat Reborn, which was uh, very good. <laughs> wasn't hard to make it any better than uh, the actual original Silent Threat, which is basically a mission pack that throws hundreds of enemies at you in frustrating missions. But nevertheless, uh, I'd like to confine my free space activities to canon, basically, because that's what I enjoy. It's a certain kind of feeling. It's uh, a skeleton with some meat in it, but lots of gaps to fill. But that's how I like the free space universe. It feels to me vast and intriguing, mysterious, kind of eerie and uh, poignant even to... I mean, you just look at the speeches of Aikenbosch, for instance, and it gives you a real feeling of this immense, uncaring void into which the Terrans and the Sudans must now strive forward together, or against each other indeed, alone. Specs against a huge cosmos. The Suda Prime obliterated by the Shivans. Earth cut off. Not to be returned to. Although, theoretically, Nosos could return us within a few decades, but still. The point is, we have been cast into this vast, deadly, and mysterious, terrifying universe and free space, the missions, and this whole feeling really captivates the idea of humanity and Vasudanity, if you will going out there and trying to establish themselves and deal with these problems. You only get a uh, kind of, you know, a snapshot view being a fighter pilot, at most a uh, junior officer. But still, it is a very powerful image to me. And it's not, some, it's not the focus of the game. Anyway, last thing to do, I've rambled enough, sorry about that. Just a uh, game like Free Space gets me feeling good. Uh, gets me into a mood to talk about why it's so awesome, if you will. Let's just check the record. We have Ghost here. That's the Blue Lions. And all-time stats. 43,012 primary weapon shots. 22,468 weapon hits. 52.2%. 1.8% friendly. Yeah, that can happen. 0.7% uh, friendly secondary. Wonder where. 408 kills, 65 assists. And uh, current score, 23,714. In case you're wondering, the score is what determines your rank. And it kind of doubles each time, I think, to 2,000, to 4,000, to 8,000, so on. So 32,000, I think, will be the next rank. And here's a list of kills. Uh, number of boxes, not as many as the last game. What are the biggest things we've killed? A Shivan Comnode. Ah, yes, SJ Stephanus. Two Molochs. Uh, Three canes too. Okay. It's nice to know all this. But yeah. Check out our metal case, which is now almost completely full. We have everything here. Apart from uh, a couple more ranks, and this area will be filled out, so. Nothing that we can do about that on the first campaign. Still, I'm very pleased at getting a triple ace, as you can probably tell by the silence when I received it. Uh, that was, that was a surprise to me. I didn't expect to get it. I thought it was 420 kills, and I was going to be, you know, slightly annoyed that we just, if I'd just flown that bit better, killed a few more enemies, we'd have got it. But in the end, 400 was enough. And so let's just go over everything. Epsilon Pegasi Liberation, self-explanatory. Imperial Order for Suda. We're technically a knight, I think that means. Distinguished Flying Cross, two of them. SOC Service Medallion and SOC Unit Crest. Self-explanatory. Wings, self-explanatory. Intelligence cross. Same as those. Order of Galatea. Uh, again, slash plug. Watch my first LP to find out about the Galatea. Slash plug. Uh, meritorious unit commendation. That's quite a high one. I think that's uh, in the real world. One below a presidential unit citation. Not too sure about that. Medal of Valor. That's, uh, <laughs> they couldn't use honor, I don't think. Uh... Legion of Honor. Yeah, that, that's a real award. French, I think. Allied Defense Citation. It's got a kind of nucleus there. 
based on the old Balls model. Um, Nebula Campaign Victory Star. Yay, self explanatory again. And finally, the NTF Campaign Victory Star. Thanks for participating in short. So, that was Free Space 2. I have waffled for a very long time after the game ended, but I just needed to get off my chest how great this game is. Um, I remember playing the demo over and over and over when I was younger, and then getting the game and playing through on very easy, then easy, then medium. Eventually, maybe I will try. Well, I have tried hard, but eventually I might be good enough to actually get through on hard and insane. Uh, I don't have that much spare time to practice, so we'll take what we got given here. So, that's this uh, game over. I very much enjoyed this one. It's been quite an exciting ride. I hope it's been for you too. I hope you've enjoyed watching. And I will see you next week with a Let's Play that will actually mirror uh, my first year, Hell King. So again, thank you for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this. I have really enjoyed this. So we'll come together at the end here. It's kind of poignant because this is it as far as canon free space goes. Uh, but maybe this time next year we'll be playing another space shooter of some kind. Uh, I have a, a few ideas. A couple suggested by someone who contacted me and I'm going to look into. And a couple of other ones that uh, are also dear to my heart. So, see you then.